Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, The Secret City. There's supposedly an archeological dig underway in Antarctica right now that the government is keeping a secret. The dig is happening roughly two miles underneath the ice. Rumor has it that the United States government is behind the excavation and that they've been blocking any information about it from getting out. A TV production crew working on an Atlantis documentary allegedly went missing in November 2002. The documentary crew is believed to have found evidence of what the government is doing in Antarctica, and now all information about them has been expunged from the record. Absolutely none of this has been confirmed by any legitimate source. It's all rumor and hearsay, but it's still something you might want to consider, especially the news that pyramids have supposedly been found near where the government is excavating. The pyramids appear to be even older than the pyramids of Egypt, it makes sense that the government would suppress this information because of the implications. If there are structures over 5,000 years old in Antarctica, it means everything we know about history is a lie. Scientists maintain that Antarctica has been buried in ice for 9 million years. If that's true, there couldn't possibly be artificial structures buried under the snow. Do you think the government is really excavating the ruins of something shocking in Antarctica? Or is this just more conspiracy theory nonsense? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 9. Apocalypse Tsunamis Scientists have predicted that a biblical-level tsunami could cause a catastrophe in the very near future. Climate scientists traveled to Antarctica and drilled into sediment cores hundreds of feet below the bottom of the sea. When they analyzed these samples, they identified previous periods of global warming. 3 million and 15 million years ago. They also found that during these times of warming, there were massive tsunamis being sent from Antarctica to New Zealand, South America, and Southeast Asia. Researchers believe the tsunamis were the direct result of climate change. Jenny Gales from the University of Plymouth says the team identified submarine landslides. These are major geographical incidents with a high potential to trigger tsunamis tsunamis that lead to a major loss of life. How could scientists possibly know all this just from looking at pieces of dirt? It's because the ice core samples that they drilled in Antarctica showed layers of weak sediment mixed with fossilized creatures. These long cylinders of Earth's crust show what happened in the region year after year. Every layer tells a story, and the story is that when it gets warm, monstrous waves are created by underwater landslides in Antarctica. Researchers believe the waves created by future Antarctic landslides could be enormous, even bigger than the 1929 Grand Banks tsunami that created 42-foot waves, killing 28 people in Canada, maybe even bigger than the Papua New Guinea tsunami that generated 49-foot waves in 1998. That tsunami killed 2,200 people. The ones coming could be even more apocalyptic. Number 8. Humans in Antarctica Space archaeologist William James Veal believes he has discovered proof of human habitation in Antarctica 6,000 years ago. He used remote sensing satellite photography to scan the surface of the continent. The technology revealed portraits of animals and what appear to be giant human heads. The satellite was able to pick up the rough shapes of human heads in the rocky terrain. It looks like somebody carved huge faces into deglaciated rock. Some of the faces are 75 feet tall, rising like titans out of the icy wasteland. The faces were also carved with weird symbols and shapes, perhaps part of some ancient code. The faces appear to be Caucasian, judging by their features, but it's impossible to say for sure. When Williams scanned the coastline of the Ross Sea, he exposed about 40 portraits of human heads. He also found animal heads and hundreds of strange symbols left behind by a lost civilization. This is incredible because you won't find much about it online. No major news stations have picked up the discovery. Mainstream archaeologists aren't talking about it. Yet William really did scan all these fantastic images. It looks like there was a civilization living in Antarctica at least 6,000 years ago, maybe even more. William hasn't found any structures yet, no ruins or settlements, only dozens of bizarre faces carved into the stone. But what could it all mean? Number 7. The Penguin Bot There is currently a robot living in Antarctica with a colony of emperor penguins. 
The robot is the latest in research technology. It's sending vital information back to researchers in Cape Cod while lounging with penguins. The robot's name is Echo, property of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. It takes readings and collects data. Echo does everything you would expect a normal researcher to do, but it does all that work without the need for supervision. It doesn't need to eat or sleep, obviously. It collects information in real time and sends it back to researchers. This is great because it also prevents humans from having a negative impact on the animals they're trying to study. Keep in mind that the robot doesn't look like a penguin, so it doesn't exactly blend in. It looks more like a rover you'd find on the surface of Mars. The yellow robot creeps across the Antarctic environment in Atka Bay and observes the curious birds. It's been in Antarctica since 2017. The whole point of the robot is to ensure the survival of the emperor penguin. Experts have suggested that penguins could be extinct within the next century if something isn't done to save them. The first step is monitoring their behavior and gathering information, which scientists can now do with robots. Number 6. The Maori Explorers A new study has revealed a shocking secret about Antarctica's past. Academic researchers have discovered that the Maori of New Zealand likely reached Antarctica over 1,000 years before the first European explorers. Lead author of this study, Priscilla Wehi from the New Zealand Government Research Institute Manaki Wenua, says the evidence is very clear. The Maori had a long history with Antarctica long before European intervention. The researchers came to this conclusion by looking at ancient oral traditions. The Maori were describing their trips to the icy continent of the south long before anyone in Europe knew it existed. There is a specific story told by the tribal group Te Ati Awa of an explorer by the name of Hui Te Rangiora. He led a vessel to a misty place full of fog and darkness where the sun never shone. He discovered impossible summits that pierced the bleak atmosphere. The explorer described a realm completely barren without a single tree. He also described the icebergs of Antarctica and the strange sea animals that live on its shores. If you look in a history book, it will tell you the first people to spot Antarctica shoreline were a group of Russians in 1820. But that simply isn't true. The Maori founded by at least the 8th century, when Europe had hardly left the Dark Ages. Number 5. The Maps of the 16th Century there were several maps produced in the 16th century of Antarctica, 300 years before the continent was officially discovered. One of the most interesting is the 1569 world map created by Gerard Mercator. It shows Greenland without any ice along its coastlines. Another map made years earlier in 1531 shows Antarctica, Greenland, and the edge of Hudson Bay. It was a pretty impressive thing to create considering that nobody had found Hudson Bay yet or Antarctica. It begs the question, how did a man named Orontius Phineas Delphinus know to include Antarctica in his map 300 years before its discovery? How did he know to include the details of its topography and even its icy rivers? The map appears to show not just an imagining of Antarctica, but the continent at a correct scale. It shows the Waddell Sea and the Ross Sea. It has the outline of Queen Maud Land and Mary Bird Land with everything placed at the correct longitudes. The map was discovered in 1960 by a man named Charles Hapgood. It had been stored in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., gathering dust for years. Some have suggested Charles manipulated the map on purpose to make it look as though it had already included Antarctica. Others believe Orontius had secret information about Antarctica, which he used to complete his map. Judging by the incredible accuracy, he may have somehow acquired a satellite image of the continent. How Orontius did that in the early 1500s is beyond explanation. Number 4. The Blood Waterfall Solved Griffith Taylor was the man who discovered Blood Falls in Antarctica over 110 years ago. It's one of the weirdest features on the continent. A glacier stained blood red so that it looks as though it's physically bleeding. Blood Falls has puzzled scientists ever since it was found, but the mystery is finally over. In 2017, scientists used ground-penetrating radar to look underneath the bedrock. They discovered tunnels in the ice leading to a buried reservoir of salt water. 
For the first time, researchers could see the source of the water pouring out of the glacier. Even at sub-zero temperatures, the intense pressure at the base of the glacier and the high concentration of salt keeps the waterfall flowing. But that was only part of the mystery. Scientists still didn't know what was causing the water to turn blood red once it reached the outside of the glacier. In most cases, red water can be attributed to minerals that are rich in iron. It's a phenomenon that can be seen in springs around the world where there's a lot of magnetite or hematite, aka bloodstone. But in the 1960s, scientists didn't find these materials at Blood Falls. The only thing they could think of was that red ice algae was living in the melting glacier, but they never found any traces of carbon to confirm algae. As it turns out, there are tiny spheres of iron, silica, sodium, calcium, and other elements in Blood Falls. A research team from the University of Alaska Fairbanks discovered the tiny spheres using a transmission electron microscope, or TEM. This is a piece of technology that can magnify objects up to 2 million times. That's why nobody found the elements before, because they are only within the billionth part of a meter. They are nanospheres, teensy particles that cause the waterfall to be the ghoulish color of blood. Number 3. Rand Flem Ath's Atlantis Theory Rand Flem Ath is a Canadian who has some very interesting ideas. He has a master's degree in library science that he got from the University of British Columbia. He was also a senior researcher for Business International UK. In 1976, he became convinced that Antarctica was the home of the mythical city of Atlantis. He became fascinated with the works of Charles Hapgood, a supporter of Earth crust displacement theory. In 1981, Rand published a collection of scientific literature using crust displacement to explain the destruction of Atlantis in 9600 BC. He also put together a series of books to explain what happened to Atlantis. The books were based on dozens of world mythologies that Rand studied extensively using information from the British Museum. The crustal displacement theory is based around the idea that polar ice accumulated at the poles in such high amounts that it threw off the rotation of the planet. It happens every few thousand years when the ice gets too heavy, causing sudden periods of instability. The weight of the ice and the shifting of the planet's axis causes large pieces of land to move suddenly. Rand used this idea to suggest that Atlantis was on the continent of Antarctica, and that Antarctica was far closer to Europe 12,000 years ago. The belief is that when the crust displacement happened, there was a great flood, the very same one discussed in the Bible. Atlantis was destroyed by the flood, and Antarctica changed position to be at the bottom of the world. If correct, this would mean the ruins of Atlantis are buried beneath the ice. The only issue with the theory is that there is zero scientific evidence to back it up. Number 2. The Sea Creatures Beneath the Ice Swarms of bizarre, crab-like sea creatures have been discovered in a river. The weird part is that the river is located 1,600 feet underneath this solid ice of Antarctica. The shocking discovery was made thanks to a team of researchers from New Zealand. The scientists traveled to Antarctica to study the river's impact on climate change. Since the river is beneath the ice, Scientists had to drill through the solid sheet and then slip a camera through the hole. They were expecting to find nothing but water, but instead discovered tiny amphipods. These creepy crawlies belong to the same family of animals as crabs and lobsters, but nobody had expected to find them there. Professor Craig Stevens said the team thought something was wrong with the camera. Once they fixed the focus, they realized they had descended into an unknown ecosystem. Thousands of crab-like animals were buzzing around their equipment. There is still so much to learn about Antarctica. Underneath the solid ice are life forms that scientists would have never guessed could survive in such a harsh environment. Number 1. Antarctic Wildfires Scientists have known for years that Antarctica was once home to a lush rainforest. 100 to 66 million years ago, James Ross Island in Antarctica boasted conifer trees, ferns, and flowering plants. It was also home to an array of interesting dinosaurs. But new research has shown that the tropical forest wasn't such a paradise. 
Researchers found charcoal remnants of forest fires that raged in Antarctica 75 million years ago. Study researcher Flaviana Jorge de Lima said forest fires during the Cretaceous period were far more common than anyone previously thought. Forest fires are hardly a new fad for the planet. The Cretaceous was one of the warmest times on Earth, and it came with consequences. Researchers found that between 84 and 72 million years ago, spontaneous fires happened all over Antarctica. Dinosaurs were cooked alive and birds fled. Volcanoes sent ash spewing into the sky. It was utter anarchy here. If you're wondering how a forest fire could have possibly started during the days of the dinosaurs, it was all natural. Fireballs from the sky, volcanic eruptions, and lightning strikes easily started fires. The other thing is that the oxygen levels during the Cretaceous were really high. There was so much oxygen in the air that once a forest fire started, it burned with unimaginable intensity. Thanks for watching! What else would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more videos! Bye!